We will now try to investigate generator in details. An AC generator has four basic components. Four basic components. Of course, we need a magnetic field. Magnetic field. Without magnetic field, no need you CMF. No change in the magnetic flux. So we need magnetic field. And magnetic field is provided by magnet. You need permanent magnet. What does permanent mean? Natural. It will not decrease or decrease. It's, it will have a constant magnetic field. Permanent magnetic field. Providing magnetic field. As you see this. With N pole and S pole. So a magnet, the magnetic field lines form from N to S. So this coil will be inside this magnetic field. Second component is we need loops or loops. Single loop for an experiment. Several loops or coils. So conduction loop or loops. But this loop must be free to rotate. Why? Because we need to change magnetic flux. How can we change magnetic flux through the loop? If the loop is able to rotate, we can make a change magnetic flux. That's why this loop must be free to rotate in magnetic field above an S. Yes, structure of an AC generator. And this is the axis of rotation. This dashed line is representing axis of rotation about this axis. This loop is able to rotate. But we will rotate. It's not, it will not do that. We will rotate by using a turbine, remember? Yes. Turbine will be attached to the coil and the loop it will start together with the turbine. Axis of rotation. And then, third component, two conducting rings called slip rings. These rings are attached to each end of the loop because the loop has two ends. Huh? One end of the loop will be attached to one ring, other end will be attached to other ring. And this ring is rotating together with the uh, coil or the loop. See that? Right hand, this is the loop. This is the loop. Why does it look like they're attached to both ends? Sorry? It looks like they're attached to both ends of the loop. No, no, not. In here, there's no connection. It's inside, passes from inside, but not connection. Then the right end is attached to first ring, left end is attached to second ring. Two rings. Because they're attached, as loop is rotating, as the loop is rotated, and I'm using passive points because we are doing that. These rings are also rotating together with the this uh, loops. Third co and last component, the fourth component is a stationary graphite. Stationary graphite strip called brushes, which are called brushes. So these are brushes, brush A, brush B, but they are fixed, stationary. They don't move. They are fixed. You screw them on a surface, you keep them at rest. So, brush A and brush B. But, when you look at it very carefully, you can see that brush A is always in contact with the first ring, but brush B always in contact with the second ring. Why do we use ring? Because we want brush to be always in contact with the loop. Ring is doing that. Because we should get electric current from the loop. How can we get it? So if we make a ring, ring as ring is rotating, uh, it's because it's a circle, it will be always in contact with the brush. So we can get electric current always from loop to the lung. But if we don't use a uh, ring in this case, you can get only once the end of the loop touches the brush. But now, end of this loop is always in contact with the brush, and then always you get electric current from the loop to the lamp. Lamp gives light. It doesn't rotate. What? Doesn't of course, they will rotate. Then how is the... But it doesn't matter. First, this part is touching the brush. Then this part is touching the brush. Then this part is touching the... What? Touching? Don't you, didn't you see the brushes? Brushes, yes. Brushes. Yeah, give different parts of the... Give letter for different parts of the ring. Say that this is the A, A part. It's in the K part. This is L part. This is M part, okay? Now K part is in contact, but ring is in contact. Rotate it, L comes in here, but ring is still in contact. Then M comes in here again in contact. It's a ring. 
Ring is always in contact with the brush. If no ring, you cannot provide continuous connection. So sometimes there will be a um, disconnection. So to provide this continuous connection, we are using a ring. ring. Slip rings. They are called slip rings because they are slipping. They are slipping on the surface of the brush. How about time they are using carbon? The graphite is a carbon. Carbon is soft metal. It doesn't make so much sound. Slipping. Of course, if you use a car, another metal, it can make a very big uh, very sound and then it can really disturb you. But right now, carbon is used, carbon is soft metal, so it can, it doesn't make so much sound as it is slipping, as the ring is slipping on the surface of the carbon, this graphite strip. Her brushes are fixed. They are stationary, fixed. Yeah, this A and B will not change the position, they are always at that position. These are four basic components of a generator. Four basic components. Yeah, you can do your own generator if you provide these four components. As the loop is rotating inside these magnetic fields, magnetic flux is changing. Uh, as magnetic flux is changing, induced EMF is produced. A continuous EMF we will induce. However, this EMF's magnitude and direction will change by time. Now, we are going to study at what orientation of the loop is this EMF is maximum, at what orientation of the loop is this EMF is zero, at what orientation it's increasing, at what orientation decreases. We'll talk about this. When, we, when, yeah, when it's rotating. Uh, when the loop takes a position parallel to magnetic field lines, normal of the loop will be perpendicular to magnetic field lines, because normal line is always perpendicular to the plane of the loop. If the loop is horizontal, normal line, this plane is going to be vertical. Angle between the magnetic field lines and the normal is 90. And if angle is 90, this in, in the EMAC D equation, EMAC sine theta, sine 90 becomes 1. Instead of sine theta, we write 1. So result is going to be E is equal to EMAX. So when the rotating loop takes a position parallel to magnetic field lines, in this EMF gets maximum value. This is the ministry exam question. I think I showed this to you in the ministry. Yeah. Gördük değil mi bunu? Yani at what orientation of the loop the induced EMF is maximum when the loop is parallel to magnetic field lines. Mathematically we can get this. Also, we can study this loop segment by segment. What does segment mean? This loop has four sides. One side, one segment. Other next side, next segment. Third segment, fourth segment. Yeah, then you can divide this loop into straight wires. Each straight wire portion is called one segment. So before starting this segment section, I am going to remind you. Six one, a title from six one. It was the first title that we studied. We were pulling a wire inside a magnetic field, remember? So that the wire crosses the magnetic field lines. One end of the wire was positive, other end was negative, correct? So I am going to remind you again, this is the magnetic field into the page. into the page magnetic field and I'm going to put a wire inside this magnetic field then we are going to pull this wire to the right or to the left, it's up to you so I remember first we put to the right in the lesson so while we are pulling this wire to the right we said that electrons of this wire is also pulled to the right so as the electrons are pulled to the right, magnetic force acts on electrons. According to right angle, we can find. So magnetic field is into the page. We are pulling the wire to the right. So force acting on the electrons are down to the page. So this down to the page magnetic force takes all three free electrons where? To the lower side. Lower end becomes negative and upper end becomes positive. This is what we studied in the first title, 
And also, we can say that this conductor producing EMF, there's an induced EMF, E, between the ends of this conductor, and this induced EMF is calculated by, believe, BLV. We didn't calculate anything, but it's this equation. But can you say that if there is a magnetic force acting on the electrons, then there is an induced EMF? Can you say this? Yeah. Without, yeah. Magnetic yeah. Force, without magnetic force, is it possible an electron to move? No. So we need a magnetic force eh? to make an induced EMF on the wire. Then can you say that if magnetic force acting on the electrons is zero, induced EMF is zero? Yes, yes you yeah. can. You can say that. Can you say that if magnetic force acting on electrons is maximum, indicium F is maximum? Yeah. Yes. yes, we can say that. Yeah, if magnetic force acting on the charge is maximum, indicium F of this wire is maximum. If magnetic force acting on electrons is zero, yes. indicium F of this uh, wire is also zero. I also explained this by this way. When you pull a wire inside a magnetic field, this wire must cross magnetic field. When we are pulling perpendicular, is it crossing? Yes. That's why there is a magnetic force. Mm -hmm. There is an induced EMF. What if I move this wire parallel to magnetic field lines? No magnetic force. No magnetic force. No, no, no induced EMF because no crossing the magnetic field lines. It was the key word. Yeah, the conductor must cross magnetic field lines. Then you can talk about a magnetic force. Then you can talk about the induced EMF. Keep this in your mind, but I will continue. This time, I am going to study this loop by four segments, four conductors. One segment, BC, BC is this. Other segment is CD, CD is that. AD is this, and AB is that. So when I was holding this loop like this horizontal, two segments are parallel to magnetic field lines. Which segments are they? Uh, BC. BC and AD. BC and AD. Parallel to magnetic field lines. Tell me now, if a conductor is parallel to magnetic field lines, no, is it possible this conductor can cross the line? No. No. So then, can you conclude that in the CMF of BC segment and the A segment is zero? Yeah. Can you say that? Yes, you can. Because remember, if you move a wire parallel to magnetic field lines, induced EMF is? Zero. Zero. So, yeah, no crossing the magnetic field lines. That's why this BC segment and the AD segment, induced EMF of them is always zero because their position, they never cross magnetic field lines. They never cross magnetic field lines. But look at the other two segments. Look at segment AB. So, when I was rotating this loop counterclockwise, that is this way. One segment is moving upwards. You get DC segment, DC. It is moving upward. What about AB? Down. Yeah, the one segment moves upward, other segment moves downward. So while they are moving upward and downward, are they crossing the magnetic field lines? Yeah. Yes, they are. These two. Why not? This is the this pan's magnetic field. As soon as this pen's magnetic field. Somebody? Okay. When I was rotating this loop, so this segment is crossing. crossing. That segment is also crossing. Then yeah, these two segments, AB and CD, are crossing magnetic field lines. They are perpendicular to, they are moving perpendicular to magnetic field lines. If a wire moves perpendicular to magnetic field lines, maximum induced EMF acting on these wires. The AB segments, and CD segment moves perpendicular to magnetic field lines. That's why they induces maximum EMF. So two segments induces maximum EMF. So if two segments induce maximum EMF, add them, loops EMF is going to go maximum as well. In here we have to know three things. One of them is. When the loop is parallel to the magnetic field lines, absolutely, induced EMF is maximum. What if there is this? Sorry? Segments are moving. Segments are moving perpendicularly, but loop itself? It's parallel. Yes. Segments are moving perpendicularly, but loop itself is parallel. Also, you can know that 
At what orientation in the magnetic force acting on the electron is maximum? Again, uh, parallel. Because if the magnetic force is maximum, in UCMF is maximum. Without maximum magnetic force, is it possible in UCMF? No. no. The magnetic force acting on the charges are maximum in here, and also in UCMF is maximum at this position. What if this loop continue rotating? Continue rotating. And from parallel to perpendicular. When loop takes a position perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. Now look at the normal of the loop. Is it in the same direction of the magnetic field? Yes. So what is angle between two vectors in the same direction? It's zero. If angle is zero, si angle is zero. Sine zero? Zero. zero. So if sine zero zero, EMF, EMF is zero. Yeah, when this rotating loop takes a position perpendicular to magnetic field lines, at this orientation, induced EMF becomes zero. zero. Can you also conclude that magnetic force acting on electrons of zero? Yes. yes, you can. So induced EMF can be obtained only by magnetic, magnetic force. force. Without magnetic force, it's impossible. Just at this orientation, when the loop is perpendicular to the magnetic field, Induced EMF is zero, Magnetic. and also magnetic force of acting on the electrons is also zero. At this orientation, when I was continue rotating this loop, one segment is moving to the left, correct? Which one is moving to the left? The Upper segment. segment. Lower segment is moving, because right. I am rotating is counterclockwise according to that I decided. So, upper segment is moving to the left, lower segment is moving right. to the right. right. Let me draw it. Upper segment is moving to the left, lower segment is moving to the right. Okay? Left, velocity, look at magnetic field. Are they parallel? Yes. yes. If they are parallel in this case, zero in this EMF. In here, no EMF is induced. Mm -hmm. About that one. One of them, also magnetic field is to the left, is to the right, also parallel. Mm -hmm. Zero. So again, zero. Okay, other two. Other two, always zero. Other two is always zero. They never cross magnetic field lines. We said that. So this segment, also that segment, never crosses the magnetic field lines. But we said they never cross magnetic field lines in the first case. I need some more help. This is the magnetic field, okay? This is the magnetic field. It's moving to the left, correct? Yeah. This is the segment. No parallel, correct? Is it parallel? Segment is parallel to magnetic field? Okay, let me rotate it. When I was rotating, this segment is crossing the pan? Hi. Is it crossing the pan? No crossing. So this this is not crossing the magnetic field lines. It's like this. Doesn't matter. Doesn't, crossing is this. These two segments never crossing the magnetic field lines. Never. Other two. Huh? At this position? Yes. It's crossing. At this position? No, no crossing again. Yeah, it, at this position, we're perpendicular. No segments crosses the magnetic field line. No segments. That's why net EMF is? Net EMF is? Zero. Zero. That's the point. This is AC. You see, AC is zero at some location, maximum zero, negative maximum zero, positive maximum zero, negative maximum zero. Plane of the loop is perpendicular to magnetic field lines, so if you say is zero, how many points that? A, C, C, E, G, M, N. In here, if you say is zero, loop is perpendicular to magnetic field lines. What about B, D, F, H? So maximum. The plane of the loop is parallel to magnetic field lines, so you see is maximum B, D, F, H, L, S. You can add it. Possible they can ask such a question. They can give a part of this graph to you and give the points. At which point loop is parallel to magnetic field lines? At which point loop is perpendicular to magnetic field lines? So don't forget, when induced MF is zero, loop is perpendicular. When induced MF is maximum, loop is parallel to magnetic field lines.